Okay, so starting the project, obviously the first thing uh, you need to do is start a new file. And what I will get you to do this time is start a new file with uh, a different template, going to the um, menu and then under new choosing project, let you choose browse, and then you can choose the default Oz ENU loaded template, which has a couple more things in it. Yep. Uh, default Oz ENU loaded. Uh, it's just got a few more things in it, uh, like some extra schedules. Okay, so I'll go through this pretty quickly. Uh, so you probably don't want to follow along with what I'm doing now because I will have to go pretty quickly um, so that we can keep the video uh, reasonable length. All right, so I'm going to make... Uh, some, no, no, no. Okay, so I'm going to change the uh, name of this ground floor plan right away to uh, basement level and level one I'll rename and call it ground floor level. And then And then in uh, one of my side views, I'll quickly make a new level. Notice I'm not worrying too much about the heights at this stage. And I'll call that new level, uh, level one. Okay, so the main the new thing... Level yeah. Just yeah. So... Uh, under massing and site, you have this tool that I don't think you've used before called uh, property line, which lets you draw a boundary. So looking at these PDFs, uh, which uh, we've got here, you can see that the uh, set out from the corner is uh, 9600. Uh, the property line probably needs to be a bit longer than that. And then the uh, length here is uh, given as broken up measurements, actually uh, we need to go to the next one, the uh, ground floor plan, to get the uh, boundary dimensions that you need there to draw that side. So, what is it, 9650 and then 3050. So I'll come back to that in a second. So firstly, to draw a uh, property line, obviously click on the property line, button under massive insight and then you need to use the create by sketching option yep. and then I'm going to start by drawing a horizontal line uh, going basically across the area that I have uh, for my views there and then I'm going to come down uh, using that measurement, so 9 is 5 -0. Right, so I don't think I've got that length right, I'll just change that now. Okay, so I've got a, uh, a vertical line that is the, the length I want for that part of the boundary. And this is, this is the tricky part. Now I'm going to use some reference planes to set out the next few dimensions. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line from the end of that reference plane, another one down below it, you'll see why this is important in a second, I'm going to draw then a vertical reference plane. So what that gives me is the ability to set a distance down from the end of that reference plane and then a distance across uh, from, uh, from this boundary line. So I'm trying to come down and across from that point where I've finished there because now I need to draw an R. So those two distances are 3050 and 3080. So 3050 and then 
3080. And now I can go back and continue creating my property line using the arc tool. Uh, starting on, uh, continuing on this endpoint, I can then go to the intersection here. You can see it's trying to snap to a nearest point, so I'm going to use tab until it gives me the intersection. And then moving the mouse, you should see it give you a tangent from that line that you're continuing from because it's highlighting this line so you know it's giving you a tangent from there. Okay, so that's how you can draw an arc um, using uh, dimensions other than a radius. That's typically how things like arcs will be dimensioned. So then I can go back to drawing a line and just draw the uh, other part of my boundary roughly using a straight line, finished property line, and I've now got a, um, a boundary. So the only tricky part there is drawing the curve. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. So you just need to take your time when you're setting out that curve, and it should work pretty well for you. And then you'll see on each of those levels, you'll be able to see the property line, and you can use that to set out the walls uh, on each level. So starting here on the... Uh, basement or the lower ground floor. It's 9,600 across and 2,000 down. So I'll draw in reference planes for both of those. So 9,600. Um, this one will be, and this other one will be 2,000. It's not giving you dimension automatically. So I'm going to do what you should always do when you have important dimensions and that is to dimension them. Sounds obvious but it's surprising how often I see people fiddling around with the sizes or the positioning of things and uh, they haven't drawn a dimension in. Okay, so now by putting a dimension uh, from this reference plane to the boundary, I can easily set that position um, and for the reference plane and also be sure as I'm working through the project that it is still Correct. So now I can choose this reference plane, set it to 2000, and the other reference plane, 9600. So that's the corner where my walls should start. So I can then go and draw walls, going back plan, uh, maybe starting with a uh, the 190 wall here, which I'll, I'll use a uh, generic wall for, but I'll have to modify it. So, starting with a wall that's close, like generic 200 mil, I can then go to properties, edit type, duplicate, and give it a new name. <coughs> edit the structure and then change the thickness to 190. So I'm ready then to draw that new wall based on these reference planes. Ah, now I've left the uh, location line, so I'll just cancel that and change the justification to, uh, or location line to finish face exterior. Height, most importantly, has to be set to the level above, because we don't know the heights between the levels. So it's really important that you do set it to a level, the height of your walls, so that when you do change your levels to the correct height, all your walls will change. You don't need to go and change the height of each wall individually. So now I can start drawing my walls. Uh, sorry, going clockwise. So I'll start here. Okay, so I've got that wall there drawn. And I can then just continue in that way adding the rest of the exterior walls maybe would be a good starting point and then go ahead and do the interior walls. But I'll, I will do a video for that maybe later if you're not sure how to do that. Uh, I'll leave